What is up everybody? Welcome back to another Roblox Studio video. In today's video, as you can see, we're going to be going over the torsion spring, the relatively new torsion spring that I think came out like last month on Roblox Studio and you have the option to use it now. It's not a beta feature or anything. So I'm going to be going over that today. I'm going to be explaining what it does. I've got some examples here for you guys to see how it functions. And I hope you guys will learn something new today. But before we get into it, I want to keep doing this more and more. I want you guys to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to like the video and share it because that will help me a ton. Small channel, we're growing fast and I want to keep that up. So once again, like the last video, thank you guys. We'll keep this up and we'll keep growing. Okay, so jumping right into it, I'm gonna go over some background information on the torsion spring constraint, just so you have a little bit of knowledge while we're going over the video and you kind of understand what's going on or you get a better understanding of what's going on. So we're gonna go right ahead and do that. So the torsion spring is a constraint that moves through rotational forces, also known as torque. And this constraint is going to exert its forces radially. In real life physics, the torsion spring is mainly going to be used to hold mechanisms together by applying force. And similar to real life Roblox, as they describe it, the spring will attempt to bring two axes from two parts together. This means that when you separate the axis by rotating or moving the torsion spring, that spring will activate to swing towards that axis to meet with it. So basically when you separate them, that's creating the tension and building up that torque. When it's released, it'll go back to line up with that axis. If you were to test it with constraints enabled on and draw on top while doing like play here or play or run, you would see it act that exact way. And it would swing whatever unanchored part it's attached to, to that axis. You'll be able to see this in my examples that I have set up here as well. And entering into the object constraint itself, or the constraint object itself, some obvious things that we can change here are the amount of coils it has, the color, as well as the radius of the spring. But specifically for the torsion spring, changing the radius will change how wide the spring arcs or stretches. So if I do 0.4, I have 0.4 as default. And if I set it to 0.8, right here it just stretches outwards. The arc gets bigger and it stretches more to create a bigger arc. Now, if I go to a regular spring over here, let me reset that. If I go to a regular spring here and I change the radius and I do 0.8 as well, the actual radius of the spring changes. It doesn't actually like stretch outwards. It doesn't move these parts or anything to make up for itself. It doesn't move itself either. It actually increases the radius. So that's something important to know if you're changing the radius. Of course, we have some properties to work with as well, which are a lot like the regular spring constraint. And that's kind of expected because it is called torsion spring and it is a type of spring. We have the damping, limits enabled, max torque, and stiffness. The damping property when changed will reduce the force of the spring. And because it's to reduce the force of the spring, increasing the value of damping will only increase the amount it reduces its force. It's kind of confusing, but the damping is basically how it sounds. It's soft, it's, it softens it pretty much. So it's reducing that force, it's damping the force. The limits enabled is the next one. It's commonly seen among all the constraints and this one will set a specific limiting angle for this constraint to only allow it to turn to a specific angle. And then max torque will limit the spring on how much torque is allowed to be applied to the spring when it's released and the force from the torsion spring is applied. And then lastly, we have stiffness, which will change the strength of the spring and increasing this will raise its strength and decreasing it will lower it. And the result of this is a more reactive spring with force applied when the spring is released. Or it can be the opposite where if you have decreased it, it'll be a less reactive spring and there will be less force applied. A great example of a torsion spring working in action similar to real life is a mousetrap. Though in a mousetrap's case, it ends up getting held back by a part or piece which retains that force. If the piece wasn't there and the mousetrap bar was bent, the torsion spring would curl up and the torque and force would essentially build up. Once you let go after it's been curled, the torque built up in it will release and return this force on the trap in the direction it was rotated from. Just like when the clip is triggered on a mousetrap, it releases and the force swings on a mouse. So essentially what I said there is that you bend this back, the force builds up, and then it wants to 
jolt back to its original position, that original axis that we were talking about earlier. And that's where that force swings to, to get to that position. And that's where it's trying to go, and that's where the force comes from. So basically, the summed up explanation of the torsion spring is the more you turn it and crank it, the more force builds up, which is why you have to have something like strong to hold it back or set it in place. Like garage doors are another great example. They have um, some sort of bar and you, you, you actually crank it with like a ratchet wrench to hold it in place so it doesn't, you know, spin out of control and the torsion spring doesn't go crazy and because uh, you, you could get hurt doing that. And now that I've explained it all, uh, we're gonna go over these examples. We're gonna go from left to right and then finally I'll show you the mousetrap which I've rigged up quite nicely with a script and a button. It reloads and everything, you'll see, it's very cool. So we're gonna start with this one here. As you can see, I bent this part to where the torsion spring is activated. So this is the original position and it's not gonna move. This is its original axis. And now I'm twisting it away from that original axis. And so what we can see here is that this one's gonna start spinning in this direction, or it's actually gonna be spinning in this direction as I'm spinning it now. As you can see, the spring is compressing that way. That's the way it's gonna compress to try and meet it in this position. That's the direction it's gonna spin. So we're gonna go ahead and do a run test and we'll see how that goes. I wish I could make it a little bit slower. Let's actually change the stiffness here, like 100. Mm, yeah, and then we'll do a damping of like five so we can get a slower reaction out of it so you guys can actually see it And yep, it did slow it down and it did spin that direction that I said so that worked out very nicely worked out very smoothly changed the exact properties and I got the result that I wanted so it's working out great so that's the general one for this example and it's gonna be the same thing for this one and we'll change those properties as well and as you can see, same thing here. It's just that this torsion spring is over here. This is the anchored part. And I, I think it's on the basis of how you attach it first, like which one you put the attachment on first. But it's gonna do the same thing to any of the unanchored parts that are constrained with a torsion spring. So we got this one here. Let's see, which direction is it gonna go? All right, so it's gonna spin that way when we spin it. So we'll I'll put it like right there and it should spin that way. We'll have a helicopter right here. <laughs> so let's do the same settings, five and what was it? 500, I don't know. Let's check this out. 100, okay. Do 100 as well. Five and 100. How many torsion springs are here? Oh, I think those are other ones. All right, and then we'll do a run test. It did spin that way, same thing. And it kind of went the same speed as this one. So this is cool working out great it's working out just as we expected just as we explained and i hope you guys are able to understand it as well which is why i'm going to remind you to subscribe right now if it has helped you and share the video for anyone else who is wondering about the torsion spring and how to use it like what is this you know i'm your guy i'm your guy and then the last example we have here i kind of made a garage door setup on a garage door they have a top part that holds the torsion spring which will spin the garage doors which is what makes it open on that curve and um, or it's something similar to that. I'm no garage door professional, but I have a kind of basic understanding of it, I guess. But as you can see, I twisted this one to where when it's open, it's like this. That's where the torsion spring is released. And then when it's closed, you can see that that torque is built up and then eventually it'll release to open the door. So something's usually holding it shut, which is the, uh, like a bolt or something but that, that's for like a whole garage door explanation so let's change the properties on this one and then you'll see what happens same thing this one's gonna spin in that direction the way it was spun before so let's see yep so it should spin in this direction the way this is going right now let's go ahead and watch it and it will open on that axis so it'll now be like an open garage door it'll go to that axis where it's not twisted and it didn't it didn't spin hold on let, let's try and up the force maybe i did something wrong let's do stiffness 500 and let, let's just leave the damping to three i don't want to do too extreme because that might be restricting it yep there we go that worked fine it wasn't as powerful and that's why it didn't kind of jerk back to the original position but it did achieve that axis 
So as you can see, when I open constraint details and draw on top, you can see that it has successfully made it to its original position, even though there is a little bit of uh, torque built up here, but that's okay. You guys get the general idea, I hope. And now last but not least, we're gonna go over this uh, mouse trap. Let's do it. This one's fun. I think this one's pretty fun. Original Poster helped me with this one. You can check him out in the description. I'll leave a link to his stuff in the description. He's also the guy who works on a game with me called Slash Bash. Sliding this in right here, we stream all the time and we stream development of our games. So I'll leave that Twitch link in the description. I always do, so make sure to check that out too. I'm always doing stuff on there. So here we go. I think it'll activate. Oh no, do I have to be closer? Uh oh. The button might have broke. I might have to fix it real quick. All right, I think we're good to go. That was a pretty easy fix. It was just inside of another model, so I had to take it out so the script could get to it and recognize what it's looking for. So here we go. Uh, we got the spring here. It's built up, so let's actually open our constraint details and do draw on top, actually. Never mind. The character is full of green bubbles or attachments. And so you can see that it's already starting to lip up and it wants to go, but this part is holding it back just like a mousetrap and this torque is still built up. But then when I let it go, clicking the button, it'll open this part, boom, and it, yeah, it does make you sit. It also reloads so it builds that torque back up, so it's twisting it back and then we can do it again. And you can see that that torque, or the spring, and it's going to that original axis. And so yeah, that's that's pretty much it with the uh, the mousetrap. I think it's pretty cool. And um, it, it functions really well and it's a good usage of the torsion spring here. So hope you guys find that cool. If you want it, I'll give it to you, I guess. I don't see any purpose in me having it other than decoration or something. So I guess I could make it a free model. I don't know, but whatever. If someone wants it, you can just like comment down below. First person to comment that they want the mouse trap gets the mouse trap. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's gonna do it for the video. That's pretty much it for the torsion spring. I hope you guys learned something new today. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and be sure to share this video, especially with someone trying to learn how to use the torsion spring. I hope this really helped you. I hope you guys come back for more in the future because I got way more to do. People want to see more content. And the channel's growing greatly, and I, I really do appreciate it. So keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep sharing. It's working really well. All right, I'll see you guys next time.